Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve the equation 1 to the power of x is equal to 2. Now, I know what you may be thinking. 1 to the power of any number is itself 1. So how can 1 to the power of a number equal 2? Well, there is a method to solving this. So first off, let's take the natural log or ln on both sides. So I'm going to do ln 1 to the power of x is equal to ln 2. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this can equal b, b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln 1 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front, so I get x times ln 1 is equal to ln 2. Now, ln of 1 is equal to 0. So I get x times 0 is equal to ln 2, meaning 0 is equal to ln 2. However, ln 2 is equal to 0 0.693, so this is false. So this method does not work, the usual method of solving exponential equations. Now what I'm going to do is use an important property, or sorry, formula known as Euler's formula. So this formula states that if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know this may seem a little confusing right now, but let's walk through it. So what if theta is equal to 0? Then this means that I got e to the power of i times 0 is equal to cosine of 0 plus i times sine of 0. And cosine of 0 is equal to 1, and sine of 0 equals 0. So I get theta is equal to 2k pi. Now if this is true, then e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 1. So, because this statement is true, then doesn't this mean that we can, our original equation was 1 to the power of x equals 2. And this is equal to 1. This number right here is equal to 1. So we can say that e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. All I did was substitute in that for 1. Now, if we solve for this, we should get our variable x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing I did the first time. I'm going to take the ln, or natural log, on both sides. So now I get ln of e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, this is equal to b times ln a. So I can move x to the front, and this is going to equal x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi, which is equal to 2. Sorry, ln of 2. Now from here, this is the same thing as i times 2k pi times x times ln e, because I can again use the natural logarithm formula and bring this to the front. And this is equal to ln of 2. 
And if you guys already know, ln of e is simply equal to 1. So now I get i times 2k pi times x is equal to ln of 2. Now if I divide both sides by i times 2k pi, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to ln 2 over i times 2k pi. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by i over i, which is equal to 1. So now I get x is equal to ln 2 times i over i times 2k pi times i. And i times i is i squared, and i squared is equal to negative 1. So now I get x is equal to negative i times ln of 2 over 2k pi. So this is my answer to this equation. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to solve the problem 2 to the power of 22 minus 1. So, to solve this, what I'm first going to do is rewrite this as 2 to the power of 11 times 2 minus 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 11 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 11 to the power of 2 minus 1. Now 1 is the same thing as 1 squared. So now I have 2 to the power of 11 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared. Now the reason I did that and rewrote 1 as 1 squared is because now I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So just to clarify, a is 2 to the power of 11 and b is 1. So now I get 2 to the power of 11 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 11 minus 1. Now what is 2 to the power of 11? Well 2 to the power of 9 is 512. 2 to the power of 10 is going to be double of 2 to the power of 9 which is double of 512 which is 1024. So 2 to the power of 11 is double of 1024 which is 2048. So now I get 2048 plus 1 times 2048 minus 1. Now 2048 plus 1 is 2049 and 2048 minus 1 is 2047. So I get 2049 times 2047 And now, a simpler way of multiplying this, rather than the usual method of this way, this way takes way too long. So a much easier route is to rewrite this as 2,000 plus 49 times 2,000 plus 47. Now from here, I can simply distribute. So I have 2,000 times 2,000, which is 2,000 squared plus 2,000 times 47 plus 49 times 2,000 plus 49 times 47 now 2,000 squared is going to be 4 million plus 47 times 2,000 is 94,000, plus 49 times 2,000 is 98,000. And finally, 
49 times 47 is 2,303. So now by adding all these up, I get 4,194,000 because 94,000 plus 98,000 is 194,000 and then I have to add in the 2,303 so now I get 303 at the end. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the problem nine to the power of 10 plus nine to the power of 10 plus nine to the power of 10. And for this problem, I actually have four option choices. So for A, I have 27 to the power of 30. For B, I have nine to the power of 30. For C, I have 27 to the power of 10. And for D, I have three to the power of 21. So to first start out, let's go through all these option choices and see if they're right or not. So we first have a 27 to the power of 30. And how this likely was resulted in was from adding all the bases and adding all the exponents. So we have nine plus nine plus nine to the power of 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is equal to 27 to the power of 30. And this is actually wrong because this is not the proper way to add exponents. So now going from here, this was likely gotten nine to the power of 30 by keeping the base the same and then adding the exponents. And this again is wrong because this is not the right way to add exponents. Now we have 27 to the power of 10 and this was gone from adding the bases but keeping the exponent the same. And this again is wrong as well. That's not how you add exponents. Now three to the power of 21, which is by process of elimination the right answer, we're gonna see how they got this. So we first start with nine to the power of 10 plus nine to the power of 10 plus nine to the power of 10. And I'm gonna factor out nine to the power of 10. So I get nine to the power of 10 times one plus one plus one which is equal to nine to the power of 10 times three. And now this is equal to three squared to the power of 10 times three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So three to the power of two to the power of 10 is gonna equal three to the power of 20. And I have this times three to the power of one. So I simply just add the exponents. This is equal to three to the power of 21. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like and share this to any of your friends or family members. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of five is equal to 100. So to solve this equation, I'm gonna first start by taking the power of five on both sides. Now I can use the property a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m on x to the power of x to the power of five to the power of five. We can think of x to the power of five as m and five as n, so I can switch the places of these two. So now I get x to the power of five to the power of x to the power of five is equal to 100 to the power of five. Now, 100, I'm gonna rewrite that as 10 squared. So now I have 10 squared to the power of five. And another property of exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of two to the power of five 
is going to equal 10 to the power of 2 times 5, which is 10 to the power of 10. And now my final property of exponents that I'm going to use for this video is that if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x to the power of 5 is equal to 10. Now to solve this, we need to get rid of this power of 5 by taking the fifth root on both sides. So the fifth root of x to the power of 5 is x. So I get x is equal to the fifth root of 10. This is my solution. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to your friends. Thank you.